up ruined me. It straight up ruined me. Uh, it's like brandy and wine, and it is a, a mess. It is a mess of a beverage. Now, how many it's a delicious are, mess. How many of you here are Sword and Laser listeners, subscribers, watch the shows? Yay! The majority. Awesome. For Thank those you so of you much. maybe who are just Jim Butcher fans and you're not familiar with Sword and Laser, we are an online science fiction and fantasy book club. You usually do this part of the show. Yes. I don't know what to say. We are an online science fiction and fantasy book club. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, all of our discussions happen over on Goodreads. And, uh, yeah, we post all our episodes up on, on swordandlaser.com. Um, and, of course, all of it comes from you. I mean, you guys are the real reason we do this show. It's, it's uh, all the, the community discussions that we have, the, the book club aspect of the show. Um, we've been going strong for seven years now. Um, so we've been podcasting for a long time with this show. And uh, how many people were here last year for the show? Awesome. Yeah. How many people were in this room when we had Robert J. Sawyer on and he talked about my box? Yes. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, but anyway, we're very excited to have uh, Jim Butcher on the show today. He's, uh, like I said, making his way up through the mass of people, the writhing flesh of Dragon Con, uh, to come here and do the interview. <laughs> He's like, no. Talk about that. That's right. Couldn't he have found some underground tunnels or something? They, they exist, right? Yeah. I feel like I've been in the bowels of Dragon Con before. Oh. <laughs> I felt that way Friday. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was pretty awesome. But um, we do have a couple of announcements to make before uh, Jim gets here. Um, for one, uh, we are very excited to announce that we are going to be joining Boing Boing as part of their podcast network as well. So we are. <laughs> We are still going to be a part of Frog Pants family. Uh, we're still going to come to all the Frog Pants events and everything. None of that will change at all, but we are hopefully uh, going to reach an even bigger audience as well uh, by being on Boing Boing. Yeah, we're very excited that they want, they're starting a bigger podcast network. And the, I, the, I don't want to spoil it for any other podcasters, but the names who are on the conference call we were with and on the email threads are, are pretty darn impressive to me. I'm fans of most of those mm -hmm. people, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, so that should be starting hopefully uh, by the end of this month um, or, around that, or around thereabouts. Uh, so we're, we're very excited. They're, they're a great group of folks, and I think we'll fit right in with their craziness over there. Also got some news about the Sword and Laser Anthology, uh, which is fan-submitted works that will be published in a book of science fiction and fantasy, Sword and Laser. And uh, we... How many of you submitted... Did anyone submit here? ...to the Sword and Laser Anthology? Oh, a few hi. people. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, there's Foil and Phaser at foilandphaser.net because of the thousand submissions that we got. We only picked 20. Uh, and the good news is we've got most of those people signed up uh, with their license and everything, so we're okay to use their story. And we should start the editing process of everything September 15th. Mm -hmm. so, so no publication date yet. Uh, we're still working on a lot of those details and the timing and all of that, but it's moving forward. And it, I can't wait for you guys to read these stories. Uh, of the, the ones that we didn't accept, there are amazing stories that I still think of and I still remember now. And the, the 20 that we didn't accept, I, I think they're incredible. So I'm really looking forward to that. Awesome. Uh, we are still hopefully waiting for Jim Butcher to arrive. I was hoping that was maybe... Are any of you Jim Butcher? No? 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 You? No? Lady? No? Okay. Uh, hey, it's cosplay. I don't know. Anything's, anything's possible here at Dragon Con. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> so there's our edit point. That's our edit point where I will stop the show and edit it in post-production, so it seems like a seamless flow into the interview today. Everything that we say from now until we introduce Jim Butcher will be between just us. Yes. Um, did anyone... Did it, live stream. Has anyone been following along with uh, Curse of Chalion? this month for reading. Yeah. Uh, Lois McMaster Bujold fans in the house. Woo! Yes. Uh, that was that was a fantastic book. And we are we're starting a new book uh, ooh, today, tomorrow? Tomorrow, officially, but I already started. Don't Did tell, you start reading? tell us about it. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? The Demolished Man. Oh, right. Uh, okay. I, picked, I picked The Demolished Man, uh, as, I, as I mentioned in the last episode, because the Hugo Awards are this weekend. And it's the 60th? Am I doing my math right? 60th Hugo Awards, 1953. Alfred Bester won the first Hugo for The Demolished Man. Uh, so I figured this was a good good coinciding of a laser book and an anniversary and, and, a, and a time to pick a book. Uh, it is extraordinarily modern in some ways, 
for a book from that era, from 1953. Like, there's things that you, I, I catch myself going, wait a minute, this was written in 1953. That, that just seems like something that would come out of William Gibson's mouth or, or come out of a modern author. And then right in the next paragraph, you'll hit something that's like, wow, that's 1953. <laughs> uh, so it's a really interesting read in that respect. But I think the overall vision of the future is really still very compelling. Have you, have you started it yet? No. No? I'm reading the uh, the VF pick for this month. That's your standard answer to me. I guess. I'm reading, the, I'm reading the books for the other book club. Are you guys familiar with my other book club? I, there, there's this, like this young man right here in the audience. I just can't say a word in front of him for some reason. He's okay? All right, vaginal fantasy. Vaginal fantasy is the other book club. Now he, he's more embarrassed that you did that. I know! Did you <laughs> I ruined everything! Destroying, destroyer of children. Like, oh, that one. Oh, that one! Okay, here it is. like, I'm reading that book too, actually. It's really so, good. Yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. It's kind of like an Indiana Jones style really? in Mongolia kind of situation. It's magic and romance and, all, you know, all the stuff that we usually go for at yeah. that book club. Alright. Yeah. What, what are you guys reading? Yeah, should we uh, either do some? I think we should actually take some questions real fast. Yeah, we can. We can just uh, we can take some some questions. Uh, we'll we'll save time for questions for Jim, of course, at the end. But if you guys got questions about anything, Jordan Lazery, sort of just wave Andrew down, and oh, he, he had a question. Yeah, he'll come uh, bring you a microphone. Yes. So that everybody can hear. Hi. I assume that uh, given that you're going to Boing Boing, uh, that you're not going to be with Geek and Sundry anymore? Or? We have not been with Geek and Sundry since the last, last video April. episode. Yeah. Last okay. April, yeah. So we're still we're still huge fans and, of everything they're doing over there. Unless yeah. you're on the other book club. The other book club. I'm right. still technically on Geek and Sundry with yeah. Vaginal Fantasy. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm sad that you guys won't be making more of it. Well, well, we can't say anything about a return of a video show, but we're totally going to try to bring back the video show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I sent an email this morning to someone about it. Baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah, steps. Baby steps. Yeah. Baby steps. It involved budgets and numbers and, and things like that. Uh, yeah, Pixel Core, the studio where we shot that series, has our set. Lem's still sitting there. Like, uh, pe out. people yeah. go there and work at the bar because it's nicer than their really? desks. Really, it's really nice. Send us pictures. They're doing like paperwork on the bar. Like, so there's there's stuff. been a rear guard action. Is Alex Lindsay, who's awesome, and, and the chief of Pixel Core has been trying to get us to take the set and put it in storage because they need that space for the things. And the, and the crew there has been really good at finding excuses that they can't move it yet this week. <laughs> so the e part of the email was stayed, like getting ready to stave that off and go, wait a minute, we might need it. We might need to be shooting. Yeah. So we, we are working on it. And if we do, in fact, uh, the show is coming back, we'll probably be <laughs> They're, they're cheering as much for your feat of getting in through the crowd as for anything else, I think. Else, yes. Crazy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jim Butcher. Bless you. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Right. Hi. Thanks for coming. We had, we had you on the video show that we were just talking about. Yes. Long ago. Yeah, well, it seems well, a year yeah, ago, maybe been, uh, something like that. It was a couple, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for once again being on the show. How's your Dragon Con going so far? Oh, uh, it's it's hectic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know that feel. All right. So we are gonna kick off with some questions from our from our Goodreads forum, and then uh, afterwards we'll open it up to the floor for for questions from the audience here at Dragon Con. Um, so our first question comes from Rob, and, and we're definitely going to talk more about the Codex Alera and, and Harry Dresden later on, but our first question is about the new series coming up, Cinder Spires. You guys excited? <laughs> so what made you try your hand at steampunk? Um, uh, about a year ago, I... <clears throat> about a year ago. <laughs> uh, I, tr I was trying several different projects, and I wanted to see um, kind of what's got the most traction with my beta readers. And so I, I think I wound up writing uh, three or four different things uh, that, that I would, was the beginning of a project just to see, you know, what kind of struck sparks. And uh, uh, the Cinder Spires was the, by far the one that got the, the strongest response. Uh, and so I decided to go with that. Uh, I was I've been looking for what project to do next, and uh, it's like, oh, okay, they like the steampunk. Cool, we'll do that. So have you been have you been big in the steampunk world? Like, is that a, a, an area that you follow very closely? Uh, not terribly. 
Uh, <laughs> I call them the costumery. Uh, yeah. I, I play a couple of steampunk LARPs, so you'll be on that, you know. <laughs> what, so tell us a little bit about what Cinder Spires will be, and for those who haven't heard about it. Um, short story uh, is it's um, uh, a Hornblower meets League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yay! Uh, or Hornblower meets X-Men, really. It's, it's closer, but League of Extraordinary Gentlemen sounds steampunk here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you have any idea how long, how many, is it, is it going to be a, a long series? Is it going to be a trilogy? Do you have any ideas of that yet? Um, right now, uh, I've sold the first three books. Um, if they like that, then we'll, we'll keep going. Um, I, I see it as about nine books, and I don't know if, if we'll actually get to go that far or not. That's going to depend on uh, the publisher and the audience. I have a feeling you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you plan a similar release schedule for it as your previous books? Um, oh gosh, I did, that's planned. Can you give me some dates? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are Rob's questions. At least right. the next five books. Um, I've got to, I know I've got to turn it in by July or, or by uh, January first. Uh, the first book has got to be has got to be turned into them. Um, I don't know how quick they're going to want to turn it around. Uh, I would anticipate it'll be out sometime next summer, but I'm not sure. Okay. And then maybe a book every year or two? About a book a year. Every six months. Every two weeks. <laughs> well, let's yes. move on uh, to Codex Alera a little. Eric has a question. Uh, he asked if the origins of the Roman Legion coming to Alera was based on the Ninth Roman Legion. I think you've said that that was the inspiration before, right? Well, indirectly, yeah. 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 Um, he goes on to ask, I think, an interesting question. Will we ever see a story explaining, or maybe you've covered it, how they came to be there? Um, no, I mean, well, maybe. I mean, it's something I could write, although uh, the early history of the Alara books that, 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 I, that I sketched out before I started writing it is just so grim. I mean, it's, it's ugly. <laughs> you know, the Romans showed up and, and, and they, they, you know, basically they, they marched into a thunderstorm and, and, and wound up in Alara. And, uh, you know, once they got there, there were all these other, there were all these other races there, and, and Romans did what Romans do, and, and uh, Roman legions started conquering. And, uh, they wound up fighting tooth and nail, you know, to survive for for several hundred years, and basically their society turned into this big collie death cult for a while, uh, in order to, just in order to, to keep going. Uh, this is this is my uh, this is my handler who I couldn't find, and so I had to come here and find it myself. And I'm sorry, she keeps interrupting. <laughs> it's okay, we found it. Yeah, no, right. Here. Um, uh, but it, it, it was just such a grim story. It wouldn't be very much fun to read. And it wasn't until you know they they kind of went through all that and they finally got settled down and then they had a society that was going somewhere. It's like okay, these people are a little bit less psychotic. Uh, it'll be a little bit easier to tell a story about them. Uh, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the story I'd want to write. Uh, but it, but they had a, they had this whole nasty history and for, for for a long time. So yeah, it, it definitely some of that is touched upon in the series. I think for sure. Right. I can definitely see the hesitancy to kind of dig deep into that that really dark past. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, uh, um, uh, the one thing the Roman legions were, were good at, they, 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 were marked, they, they were good at marching into places and taking over. I mean, they did it almost everywhere, so. It sounds like you're not talking about a, like, George R. R. Martin, Joe Abercrombie darkness. You're talking about a, like, just slash and gore. Yeah, yeah right, basically. Nothing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nothing else to do. Crom. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we could hear some of the stories from before they showed up about the various races that inhabit, inhabit Alara. Oh, that's possible. Um, uh, I, I mean, I, I certainly haven't written off going back to the Lair books at some point, although I would probably go uh, a little bit further into, I would probably go about 100 or 150 years into the future so you can see the fallout of what everybody did in the first series and what it's meant. And although you wouldn't have, you know, the same characters around, well, you'd have some of the same characters around because the Canaan would still be there, um, but uh, uh, you would have, like, the descendants of the other characters. And, and the other idea I had was for the, the first class of, of new cursors uh, uh, that, that, would, that Aaron would be training. Um, uh, the crow begotten Batman, as, as, as he's become known on the fan forums. You know, but, uh, uh, and that would be fun, because it would be a new class of cursors. It would be the first Kanem cursor, and, you know, the first uh, Marant, and, and so oh, on. Oh, so. nice. <laughs> you're here, you're safe, we promise. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, I would love. I would love to read a series about that because I. I was such a huge fan of that. Hey, how you doing, Kevin? Really? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Hang on, I'm gonna tell my handler not to panic. <laughs> this is what post production is for. <laughs> I apologize. That's okay. No worries. 
Um, how many people are fans of the Codex Alera series? <laughs> They're some of my, my favorite books. I, I have not finished the Dresden Files series yet. I know. Oh. Like, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Where'd you leave off? Spoilers, you guys. Tell him. No spoilers, <laughs> Joe Butcher. <laughs> Where'd you leave off? I think I'm, I was on like the fifth or sixth book. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> I got her voicemail, hang on. <laughs> Look, right. I'm here, don't panic, stop texting. Okay, he's fine. Uh, Jim, I'm on stage, all right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's move into the Dresden Files now, uh, because before everyone murders me on the stage, <laughs> for having not finished the series. You heretic? I told you that the last time we interviewed, and I, I was like, I'm gonna finish up, I'm gonna, uh -huh. get, I'm gonna get there. The problem with doing two book club shows is that suddenly you're, you're, you read for your living, and then you don't have time to read all the other things that you want to read. So feel bad for Poor me. Poor Veronica. Oh. Don't be mad at me. She has to read for a living. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, this first uh, Dresden-related question comes from Jeffrey N., who writes, uh, My wife loves the series, but hates Butcher for what he does to her boyfriend. <laughs> Have you ever had a fan berate you during a signing because I'm afraid she may, if given the chance? Um, or beaten up on, on Ford Dresden. I'm trying to think if I've ever had a fan not berate me during <laughs> No, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, uh, almost ever, why do you do this to poor Harry? How can you do this to poor blank? And uh, I often get asked that, you know, why do you torture your characters like that? It's just, it's not that I like torturing the characters, it's, it's that I like torturing you all. <laughs> it's just that the, the characters happen to be the best way to get to you. Right. Also, frankly, it wouldn't be much of a story if people didn't get, didn't encounter problems and issues and horrible things happening to them. That's oh, called yeah. My Little Pony. Yeah. <laughs> Any bronies in the audience? Woo! Yeah, all right. How many of you like being tortured by Jim Butcher? Oh, yeah. Thank you. There's a whole track for that. <laughs> uh, Alan wrote, how do you avoid grade inflation in such a long-running series as The Dresden Files? He explains the danger in each book has to feel as grave or more so than in the book before it. How do you prevent the whole thing from spiraling into fights between omnipotent beings? Um, well, those aren't scheduled until much later in the series. <laughs> uh, 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 forethought, planning. Um, you got to figure out where you're going and where you're going to end up and make sure that you pace yourself on the way there. Uh, you do it by establishing various sorts of threats and challenges. Uh, uh, you know, there are some bad guys that just aren't too much of a threat to Harry and other bad guys that are just deadly dangerous. Um, not necessarily because they're more powerful, but because they're different. Um, and so mostly that's just a, it's just a matter of finding out, you know, which bad guy knows his weakness, you know, which bad guy knows, knows how to get to him, uh, uh, who's the guy who <laughs> I Do love you that you music? have the Star Wars theme as your ringtone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What else am I gonna have? You know, as, as a ringtone. But um, uh, in any case, um, you know, and, and the idea is, is was all along was uh, I had a, a set number of a series of books that I wanted to write, a number of books I wanted to write, and so I kind of knew how to pace myself. Okay, this is how I'm gonna start laying out bad guys as I go along. And some of the bad guys were built to, to morph and upgrade as they went, and, and you know they're still appearing and reappearing over time. Nice. Our uh, last uh, uh, Dresden Files related question comes from Jonathan, who says, Dresden is the quintessential urban fantasy private investigator. What's an odd profession that you'd like to see an, an urban fantasy protagonist take up? Uh, like an urban fantasy chef or an urban fantasy accountant? Oh, um, gosh, I cannot imagine urban fantasy accountant <laughs> you know, as, as a terribly it interesting job. sounds like job. a new dare. Unless it, like was like a, unless it was like a forensic, a forensic accountant, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of those guys you hire to go in and track things down. Um, I'd never even consider that question. Uh, uh, I don't know. That's, that sounds like a great story for somebody else who's really interested, interested in it to write. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, yeah. We're that's giving where, the that's idea where good stories guys. come from. All right, uh, so some general questions, uh, different Alan this time. What is curious to know if your writing speed coincides well with the publication speed. Uh, if Jim writes faster, has he ever considered self-pubbing any of his work since the traditional houses don't like overlapping works from the same author publishing several works in a short period of time? 
I've never really had an issue with my writing speed overlapping my publishing speed. Uh, uh, seriously, I mean, I, I tried to do I tried to do three books in a year uh, several years ago when I did the Spider-Man book, and that was like in 2005 or something like that. And I'm still behind schedule from that. Uh, so no, I I haven't really thought about doing that. All right.